Video arcades are where the whole gaming industry started. And now, thanks to emulation, you can bring all those classic games right to your very own PC. So, let's find out how it's done. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The massive gaming industry that we have today was born in the late 1970s with computer arcade machines. It all started with what we would consider incredibly simple games such as Pong, which was basically a ball bouncing around the screen, and things like Space War which involved two spaceships and basically firing bullets at each other. But at the time these were considered as technological breakthroughs and these were the first time that the general public had a chance to play computer games. In the early 1980s we saw a massive boom in computer gaming as arcade cabinet technology got better and better along with the release of some of the most iconic games ever produced. Space Invaders started this golden age of arcade gaming followed by Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Galaga, Asteroids and many many more with the top games earning billions, yes that's billions of dollars in sales and coins, so every company wanted to release games to get their part of this action. Now this boom continued through the 1980s until home computers and home game consoles caught up with the quality of these arcade machines, and people started to move to home based computer gaming rather than going to the computer arcades where they had to pay to play each of the games. The 1990s then saw a sharp decline in the number of video game arcades until they all virtually disappeared or, or turned into these fruit machine arcades that we see today. So if you do want to play these classic arcade games, I do first of all highly recommend that you visit a computing museum where you'll actually find a range of original arcade cabinets. Or, as we're going to see in this video, we can take advantage of emulation and run the real code from the real arcade cabinets directly on our home computers. So let's turn your computer into a classic arcade cabinet and play every game ever written. Well, at least almost every game. To start with, we need an emulator. Emulating arcade cabinets is a bit different to emulating something like a games console. Each arcade cabinet was built for a single game, and some cabinets were then modified to play other games, but this still means that there are literally hundreds of different computer systems that need to be emulated to play all the arcade games. The Multi Arcade Machine Emulator, or MAME software, does just that. So, if you visit uh, mamedev.org, you'll get the official MAME development website where you can download the software. Now, there are a range of options for installing and running MAME. If you're using a front end for your retro gaming, such as RetroPie or LaunchBox, you can usually enable MAME emulation through one of the cores and set up the software that way. All you need to do then is to get hold of some ROM sets and you're good to go. Now, I'll be covering RetroPie setup in a separate video, as in this one I want to show you how to download the latest MAME version and then set it up as both a standalone application and as part of a launch box setup. If you go to the MAME website and scroll down the home page, you will find links to the downloads for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. Clicking on any of these will take you to the latest release download page. Now for Mac OX and Linux systems you will find some pre-compiled versions but if you want the very latest version you're going to have to compile and build that yourself. Now there are full instructions on how to do this so please have a look um, at those instructions as I'm not going to be covering that in this tutorial. For this video I'll be installing the Windows version which can be downloaded as a single executable file. So on the Windows download page you'll also find a driver information database download. Now this is a file that contains details of how every single arcade machine the software emulates is set up. You don't need this for your download um, and you don't need it to play your games. The Windows download file is actually a self-extracting archive. So when you open it it will ask you where you want to install your software. 
Now, if you're going to be running MAME as a standalone application, just simply create a folder for it somewhere on your computer and extract the files there. Now, I'm eventually going to be connecting my MAME installation with my LaunchBox gaming front end. So I'm going to install the files in a MAME folder inside the emulation folder inside my LaunchBox folder. And this simply keeps my LaunchBox set up um, as a self-contained unit inside a single folder. Now, once the files are extracted, MAME is installed. If you browse to your folder and double click the MAME application file, which will either be uh, MAME.exe, uh, MAME64.exe or MAME32.exe, de depending on which version you've downloaded, um, you'll find the emulator will start. If you look at the filter lists on the left, you can get a list of all the games by clicking on the unfiltered link. Now that is a list of all the games that MAME understands. If you then want to have a look at what games you've installed, just click on the available. Um, but at the moment, of course, we don't have any games. So let's go and get some. If you've used other retro game emulators for consoles and computers, you'll know that we need to download game files which contain the actual game code. The emulator pretends to be the computer system and the game software run, then runs on it as if you had the real console sitting in front of you. Because MAME has to emulate so many different systems, each with their own sets of circuit boards and microprocessor systems, MAME ROMs work in a slightly different way. Now, I've, I've made a video which um, fully explains the different types of ROM sets available for MAME, so please do have a look at that if you want to fully understand how everything fits together. And I'll put a link up in the corner there so you can get to that easily. Now, but for this video, I'm simply going to get hold of everything we need to get all of our games up and running in one go. So to do that, we need to get what's known as a reference ROM set. Now, reference ROM sets are built for specific versions of MAME. And if possible, you need to download the reference set that matches the version of MAME that you just installed. Now, sometimes if you've downloaded a brand new version of the software, it can be hard to find an exact match. And in this case, um, we just simply use the reference set for the latest version that you can find. So on each new version of MAME, changes are made to the way it works, along with updates to some of the ROM files. Uh, but most games you'll find are compatible across different versions. But you might find a few games that don't work, even if you have downloaded the correct reference set. So of course, we need to work out where is the best place to get hold of these ROM sets. And, and I find the best place is actually the Internet Archive. So if you go to archive.org, um, you'll find that we can simply, in the search box, if we search for MAME, followed by the version number that we want, we should then get a list of downloads. Now we now need to work through these um, to make sure that we're getting the right files in an easy to download format. Now some of the downloads will be for the MAME software itself. And you can check this by going to the download page and then having a look at what files are available. And you do that by clicking on the show all link. Now, if this contains the software installation files or the source code files, then this, this isn't the right file for us. And an important note here, um, please do not use installation files that you download from anywhere other than the official main project website. Um, you can never be sure if those files haven't been tampered with. Now, most of the ROM downloads will be labelled as ROM downloads, or they may say something like a merge set or a reference set or a split set or something. And, and once you go to these download pages and click on the show all link, you should see a long list of ROM files. Once you're happy that you're actually downloading the ROM sets, we need to get hold of them in the easiest and fastest way. Now, there are usually a range of download options displayed on each archive page. Now, now, now sometimes the archive author um, uploads all of the game ROMs as, a, as separate files. And when you go into the show all page, you'll see them all listed out. Uh, and you can download each of those individually, but since there's gonna be a few thousand games to download, this option is really only of, of use if there are specific ROM sets that you need. 
Now, usually the archive author will put all the ROM files into a single zip file or some single archive file, and that means you can download everything in one go. You'll also find that there will be a few options on how you can download this file. So often there is a zip download option, which lets you download all the files in a single archive. And this option uses the normal HTML download link. As the files we want to download will be upwards of 50 gigabytes to get all of the main games in one go. Um, this method of downloading is going to take a very long time. And I mean, it's gonna take days rather than hours. So I find that the fastest way to get hold of your files is to use the torrent download option. Again, if there is one. So torrent or, or BitTorrent is a way of using the community to make downloading and sharing files faster. So, so basically people who have already downloaded the files that, that you want, allow their computers to deliver the files to other people who want to download the same files. And this is called peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Now you need to install a BitTorrent client on your computer and then download the torrent file for the ROMs download that you want. And you'll get that from the archive.org torrent link. Now this torrent file, it doesn't contain any of the actual software. It just tells your BitTorrent client what files that you want and where it can ask them or where it can get hold of them on the community. It also then contains information to make our, our downloads safe. So um, it has security information embedded into this file, which will cover things like checksums and so on. And that ensures that when we do download our files, if they, if they match our checksums, then we know that they haven't been tampered with uh, and nobody has put any sort of malware or anything in there. And the, the problem, of course, is that, that BitTorrent can be prone to manware, malware and viruses and abuse. So as I said before, never install or run program files that you're downloading in this way. And only ever use the MAME installation files that you've just downloaded directly from the MAMEdev.org website. Now, Although the ROM sets that we're going to be downloading will contain computer software, that software cannot run on your computer. It's code that can only run on the arcade machines that we're going to be emulating. And that code, of course, will be running inside our MIM emulator so that it doesn't have any access to your PC. So once you've downloaded the ROM sets using BitTorrent, it's good practice to give back to the community. Um, now these files exist on your computer. Your computer can now also act as what's known as a seed to help other people download the same files. So if you leave your BitTorrent client software running for a while, you, you'll start to see it delivering your files to other people. And the basic idea is to be part of the community is that you give back the same amount of data that you downloaded. So if we've downloaded 50 gigabytes of data, we, we should really give back 50 gigabytes to the community. And in this way, we, we help others keep the download speeds up and, and also make sure that there are, are enough seed computers as possible so that people can actually get hold of the files. So first of all, we'll look at installing our games into a standalone version of MAME. And to do this, you simply need to copy the ROM set files into the ROMs folder in the MAME's installation folder. So once you start MAME, you should then see a list of games appearing in the central area. Now there are a number of menu options on the left to help you filter your list. So unfiltered will list every game that MAME understands. Available then will list all the games that are available on your computer at the moment. Now in all of these lists, you'll find some games are shown greyed out. Now that doesn't mean that the game isn't working and that you don't have it. It just means that that game is not a parent game. Now MAME uses a series of parent and clone games to organize the ROM files needed to emulate any system. And again, if you want to know more about this, then please check out my video where I explain the whole system of MAME ROMs. Now, once you've got a list of games, simply double click one and have some fun. Now, if you don't already use a front end for your retro gaming, I do highly recommend something like LaunchBox. 
This provides you with a much nicer interface rather than just simply a list of games that you simply click. Uh, and Launchbox also has a clever importing system which is dedicated to MAME ROMs. But to start with though, we, we actually need to attach our MAME installation as the Arcade Emulator System. So, in, in your Launchbox menu, we need to select the Tools option and then click on the Manage Emulators link. And this will bring up a list of emulators that we've installed into Launchbox. Now we need to click the Add button at the bottom and then use the drop down list for the emulator name to select MAME. Although you can type in your own name, using the drop down list that will actually tell Launchbox that this is actually the MAME emulator and it will automatically set up some options to drive this correctly. So next you need to click the Browse button and find the MAME executable file that we downloaded and installed onto our computer. So simply browse to where you installed MAME and then find the MAME.exe file. And again, that may also be labelled as MAME64 or MAME32. Uh, and that of course depends on whatever version of MAME that you have um, installed. So you then need to go to the Associated Platforms tab. And then you should find that Launchbox has already been attached, it's already attached the MAME emulator to our arcade platform and set that as the default on emulator. So just simply click on the OK button and then you should find that MAME is now in your list of emulators. So Launchbox is now ready to import your game ROMs. Um, before we start importing games though, just be aware that this can take a few hours to complete. One of the big advantages of using Launchbox to play your games is that it automatically finds box art, games details, other images and even videos for each of the games so that we can create a really nice front end for you to play all your favourite games. So we're going to be importing a few thousand games so getting hold of all of this information from the internet is going to take a long time and my advice is to start this in the evening Make sure you change your computer's power settings so that it doesn't go to sleep and that will actually pause the whole process which defeats the object and then leave it running overnight. So to start the arcade import wizard, just simply go to the launch box menu, the tools option, import and then MAME arcade full set. And this will start the import wizard which is going to ask you um, a number of questions about how and where we want to import our ROM sets. So from this first screen, just click on the next button. On the second screen, we need to name this section which is going to hold all of our arcade games. And by default, this is just simply arcade. But if you want, you can change that to anything you want to. Uh, so sometimes you might have multiple arcade emulators installed, so this will help you identify each one. Um, but once you're happy with the name, simply click on the next button. We now need to tell Launchbox where the ROMs are stored. So click the Browse button and find the folder where we extracted our main ROM files to. Now again, I've put mine in the ROMs folder, inside my main folder, which is inside the emulator folder, inside my Launchbox folder. Next, we need to choose which emulator we want to run these ROMs with. Now, if you've attached MAME to Launchbox, you should see that as an option in the drop-down list. If you have other versions of MAME installed, you'll see these listed as well. As I said, one of the big advantages of using a front end for your gaming is that we can get lots of information, so images, even videos, that help us find out more about the games and provide us with a colourful interface to our emulator rather than some of those simple text lists of game titles. So make sure then that on this next screen we, make, we tick the metadata box um, to download all of this information. Now that we've specified we want this metadata, Launchbox is going to ask us which support files we want to download. And here the easiest way is to just simply check everything so that we get as much information about each game as possible. As I said, Launchbox can also download little movie clips of our games, um, but you do have to have an account with MU Movies um, to be able to get hold of those. Now, now this can take up a lot of space on your hard drive, so I must admit I do tend to just skip this one. We now get to the final screen, 
which is the most useful part of the import wizard. Now Launchbox is going to import all of our arcade games, but it understands how main ROM sets are organised with parent games and clone games, and it also understands what genre each game belongs to. Now the first set of radio buttons you'll see on this screen specify how clone games are going to be handled. So, so clone games are basically other versions of main parent games. And the recommended option here is to simply import them as additional versions of the main game. And this means that in your game list, you'll only have one game listed, but that may have a number of different versions attached to it, which you can also play. Now, for, for example, the, the main version of Pac-Man is actually a clone of the original Japanese version, which was called Puck-Man. So, so using this import method, you'll find Puck-Man listed in your games list, but you'll have to right click on it to get access to either the US or the UK or the, or the main versions that you'd be familiar with as Pac-Man. But the main reason for importing clones as additional versions is that if you import them as separate games, you're going to end up with a truly massive list of games in Launchbox, which just simply makes it harder to browse through games and find the ones you want. Now, as always, this is a personal choice, but I, I do always use this recommended option. You can also specify which region version of each game you prefer to use. Now, quite often the text inside a game gets customised to the country it's being shipped to. I generally stick to North America to hopefully get an English text version. There are a vast range of different types of games in the MAME catalogue. Now, some of those aren't worth having as part of your game collection. The skip checkboxes tell, tell Launchbox not to import certain types of games. And mostly you'll want to skip all of the ones listed, um, but do have a look through to see if there's any that you'd rather keep. The last three checkboxes gets Launchbox to create a whole range of very useful playlists. These are, are very, very useful um, as they can help you browse your collection of games by manufacturer, genre and other factors. And I'd advise leaving all three checkboxes ticked to give you the most playlists to browse through. So once you've done all that, just click on the next button and Launchbox will then scan your ROM files and present you with a list of games that it's found. Now you can scroll down to have a look at this list and just to make sure it looks about right. And once you're happy then, you can click on the finish button and the actual importing will start. Now this importing is going to take a number of stages where Launchbox updates its database, imports the ROM files and then downloads all of these media files. And the whole process will take a few hours, um, so make sure your computer isn't going to go to sleep and then just leave it running. Once the process has got past the game import stage, um, and, and even while the computer is still downloading the media files, you, you can actually start playing the games. Um, it's just you'll obviously just have a list of games, or, or you can even go on and use your computer for other tasks. Now once the whole importing process is finished, you should end up with an arcade section in your left hand menu. And if you expand this, you'll see all the playlists that Launchbox has automatically created for you. Simply browse through and double click to play any of those games. So whether you set MAME as a standalone emulator or you've put it within your front end, you should now have a few thousand classic games to keep you occupied over the coming months. Now I'm planning on a few gaming videos to show you some of my favourite games over the next few weeks, so please do look out for those. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, then please do click that subscribe button and make sure you also click that notification bell so that YouTube can tell you when I've produced some new content. So get your arcade joystick out, boot up MAME and have some fun. Hopefully I'll see you in another video soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.